My patient is a 46-year-old gentleman who is a resident of BY from Haryana. <clears throat> he is a farmer by occupation and is a, uh, he has studied up to six standard. By social, his socioeconomic status is uh, upper middle class according to the modified social Kuposami. Uh, date of admission 14 January 2021 and we examined the patient on 16 January 2021. The present day complaints of the patient include abdominal distension from last two months, yellowish discoloration of eyes and passage of high colored urine from last seven days, relative to strep spots within one week. History of presenting illness, patient was all right two months ago when he noticed abdominal distension as his clothes became tight, which was gradually in onset and progressive in nature. Over the last 15 days, this progressed more rapidly and he saw hospitalization when swelling increased to such an extent that he started having breathing difficulty immediately on lying down, for which he started using two pillows under the shoulder while lying down. The breathlessness was not associated with any progress or pain or pedal edema and it didn't worsen with any exertion. The abdominal distension was associated with the feeling of abdominal fullness and decreased appetite. The patient's oral intake was reduced from three chapatis to eat three uh, about one and a half months back to one and a half chapati in the whole day. The swelling was associated with generalized dull, aching abdominal pain without any specific aggravating or relieving factors. He gives a history of two episodes of passage of fresh blood after passing stools and was associated with straining, both, both of which happened in the uh, within the one, one week. He also complained of constipation from the last one month. No history of any black, tarry or foul-smelling stools. He, he also noticed darkening of urine from the last seven days, along with yellowish discoloration of eyes, as noticed by relatives, which progressively depend. No history of any generalized itching, passage of clay-colored stools, no history of any fever, weight loss, no history of any altered sleep cycle, no history of any abnormal movements or abnormal behavior, no history of any similar episode of jaundice in past, or no history of any blood transfusions, tattooing, piercing, or injectable drug abuse or high-risk behavior. During this hospitalization, he was started on some medications following which his urine output increased. He also underwent a procedure in which two liters of straw colored fluid was removed from his abdomen, following which his breathing difficulty relieved and swelling decreased. Past history. No history of any TB, uh, no history of any herbal medication use, no history of DM, hypertension, thyroid disease, no history of any surgeries in the past, no history of any drug allergies, no history of any long-term medications for any element. Family history, no history of any liver diseases in the family, no history of fever or jaundice uh, currently among the family members. Personal history, he consumes mixed diet, predominantly vegetarian. He consumes alcohol about 800 to 900 ml, uh, 20 units per day of uh, country liquor from the past 33 years without any abstinence. He smokes hookah daily for the past 20, 20 years. Now, summary, 27-year-old gentleman with significant ethanol consumption presented with progressive ascites with jaundice and bleeding fear without any fever or altered sleep cycle or altered meditation. I would consider it as an alcoholic liver disease presenting in decompensation without hepatic any test. Final examination. A middle-aged man lying uh, comfortably in bed, who is conscious and cooperative, well-oriented in time, place, place and person. Height 170 centimeter, weight 62 kg. Vital parameters include pulse rate 74 per minute, regular, normal volume, normal character, all peripheral pulses felt equally by that BP 106 over the 64 millimeter of mercury over the right arm is fine position. Respirator rate 20 per minute for us abdominal. Temperature 98.4 degree Fahrenheit over the axilla. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Divya, you are not audible. Your audio audio quality is very uh, poor. We are not able to hear you. Blood sugar 106 milligram per deciliter by glucometer.
Hello. Hello. Now you are audible. Now you are audible. Please, please uh, go ahead. Head to toe examination, temporal hair loss present, loss of temporal fat, ictus present, no pallor, fetal hepaticus absent, no parotid swelling, spider navy present over upper back, axillary and pubic hair sparse, no gynecomastia. White and brittle nails, uh, muscle wasting present over the thinar and hypothenar eminence of the hands, no pa uh, palmar edema, no duplicates, contracture of flapping tremors, no pedal edema, no clubbing, sinosis, lymphadenopathy, testicular atrophy present. Examination of gastrointestinal system, uh, mouth and oral cavity, dental caries present over the molar teeth, stained lower incisors, inspection of abdomen, generalized distension present, planks full. Umbilicus shifted downwards, horizontal slit, superficial veins visible over the lateral aspect of the upper abdomen, all regions moving symmetrically with respiration. No visible scars, visible pulsations or pedestalsis seen. Palpation of abdomen, no tenderness or local rise in temperature, no diverification of recti or umbilical hernia. Distance from CP sternum to umbilicus 28 centimeter, uh, which is more than that of uh, umbilicus to pubic symphysis, which is 22 centimeter. Abdominal girth 108 centimeter. Distance from umbilicus to anterior superior iliac spine uh, is equal over both sides. Liver palpated two finger birth below the costal margin in the midclavicular line, which is firm and uh, regular margin. Spleen not palpable, hernial orifices are normal, testicular atrophy is present, no scrotal edema, parectal examination, uh, hemorrhoids present at three o'clock position. Percussion of the abdomen, liver dullness, up, um, upper border, uh, at fifth intercostal space and lower border uh, four centimeter below the costal margin in midclavicular line. Liver span uh, 18 centimeter, drop space dullness absent, shifting dullness present, fluid trail absent, auscultation, bowel sounds heard, uh, no uh, one to two sounds in uh, no hepatic buoy or venous hum heard. Diagnosis, decompensated alcoholic liver disease with portal hypertension without any hepatic encephalopathy. So it was uh, very nicely presented uh, case, Dr. Divya, uh, though you were a little uh, fast, but it was a very well uh, documented case. And uh, uh, since there are no questions, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, it has, the question has no impact on the treatment, but you know, Bhivani is not in Rajasthan, is not in Haryana, it is in Rajasthan. Bhivani is in Haryana. Bhivani is in Haryana. Bhivani is in Haryana. Bhivani with N is in Haryana. Bhivani with okay. D is in Rajasthan. Ah, is in Rajasthan. Yes. Okay. And how much blood did he pass through in this stool that you complain? Sir, one, it's, it was streaks of blood. One. Along with the feces before defecation or soon after defecation? Uh, sir, was it a splash in the, the pan? Uh, because they sir, all after, have significant. After, uh, after the defecation, uh, he noticed a streak of blood. Uh, the, okay. It was not so, a large. Uh, not, not as a draw. Not mixed with, uh, not okay. mixed with stools. And is he married? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, and as a as a general practitioner, uh, our most important our most important uh, history should be his support system, the setting from which he is coming. What is his family? Who stay with him? Have there been any familial marital discord because of the alcohol? Because there is a pyramid kind of a thing that decides and get our treatment protocol also. So to gauge the impact on his life of this social and medical problem, we need to know whether he has ever been on the other side of the law because of his drinking problem. Uh, it is a very well documented case. You have presented it so nicely. Uh, it would be the icing on the cake if you could add on to this. And while presenting, uh, I think it is best and safest to say Diabetes mellitus rather than DM. 
Okay. Though uh, we are inclined towards writing DM, but uh, in examination and while presenting in forums, best is not to use short forms and abbreviations. Though it hardly makes an imp impact on the outcome or the present. It was a wonderful presentation. And uh, the blood sugar, as you said, is 106. So is it a random sugar? Was it a fasting sugar? Was it a PP sugar? It's a random blood sugar. Random blood sugar. Somebody uh, has asked, Dr. Devashis has asked that, how can you tell us more about his alcohol intake? What kind of, uh, what, did he, so you know there's a cage protocol, cage yes, questionnaire? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So ha has he ever uh, used an eye opener? Uh, the first he has, drink, uh, has he ever no, felt the need? No, he has never used it as an eye opener, but uh, he's annoyed with his habits and uh, he wants to cut off the amount of alcohol, means drinking habit and... Uh... Wonderful. So it is more than two positives. So cage is more than two. So uh, it would be nice if you could have uh, scored him on audit score also, because... It has a prognostication. It is alcohol use uh, disorder. You know, there is a score. It is a uh, takes about 10 questions. There is a scoring 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Yes. So it is a WHO collaborated, uh, verified, and endorsed scoring. Never mind. Uh, 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 it is a, a wonderful presentation. And uh, has he ever been on the other side of the law? Has he ever been in trouble with the law of enforcing agencies because of this? Because it'll have a bearing on the uh, on his staying sober also. If he falls back to the same com company. Uh, Is it Dr. Devya? Sir, I didn't get has he question. ever been has he, has he ever been in uh, in a problem with the police because of his drinking uh, sir I don't I didn't ask that much sir. Uh, that's okay that's okay yeah I mean these are things one should uh, keep in mind because uh, people who are habituated tend to sometimes unknowingly also cross the lines of uh, legitimacy and tend to be on the other side of uh, law and uh, uh, have, it is not uncommon for them to have problems with the law enforcement agencies. So as you said, he had difficulty in uh, uh, breathing and he had a abdominal, progressive abdominal distension. So uh, did you ask him, uh, what does he feel about his condition? What is his idea about his own health? Um, sorry. He must be having some apprehension, some anxiety about his own condition because it is, there is a very, very uh, uh, sensitive area of uh, clinical skills called the ideas concerns and the expectations. What does he expect from the uh, healthcare interaction? Uh, actually, what, what is his idea about his own? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. yeah. Uh, he yeah. wanted uh, to get the problem settled as an overall means. Uh, he was asking so many times like uh, when this will settle down, when this will settle down, uh, will I be able to be in my normal state of health? Even after multiple counseling, uh, he still remained that, uh, like, even after saying that he is having liver disease, but he was not ready to accept that state of um, health that he's having. And wonderful. And uh, it is good that you have dwelled on this. And uh, see, usually people with substance uh, abuse or substance misuse, they tend to, uh, you have heard about the word confabulation? Yes, sir. Yes, so uh, for all uh, such people, the history has to be corroborated with the uh, family or with a reliable source. 
Yes, so sir, did you collaborate the history with the Yes sir his with uh, son some was reliable there. source Yes sir his son was there How old is the how, how old is his son He is 20 How old is his years, son sir. 25 years sir Okay wonderful wonderful And uh, do you know uh, that WHO has a way of describing uh, how much alcohol or uh, expressed in the presentation but i am certain that everybody knows that just to reiterate and remind everybody that there is a uh, uh, there are four uh, low risk drinking hazardous drinking harmful drinking and possible dependence so uh, you can uh, just to re remind you that uh, uh, there are units defined about a hazardous, hazardous drinking is uh, about 21 units per week for females uh, males and uh, more than 17 units per week for females hazardous is uh, more than 21 for females and more than uh, more than 21 28. for males and more than 17 for females that's per okay week. i uh, but uh, since uh, there are already uh, he is dependent on it so he comes into dependent drinking yes. now there at this point of time i think it will be very relevant for us to see that what is binge drinking we have all heard about binge drinking no yes that sir. binge eaters binge drinkers so what is binge drinking binge drinking more, is that more than when you five, drink yeah you yeah more than five drinks yeah more than uh, five drinks for males and more than four drinks for females within 2 hours uh who says yeah, you are not wrong uh, who says it differently it says more than twice the recommended amount if con consumed in one session okay. so it doesn't give a time frame to it if in an evening over an evening you consume more than twice the recommended do uh, number of drinks it is called binge drinking so very wonderfully presented uh, history was complete examination was complete and uh, uh, you have almost touched on all aspects of the history also examination also and you have said that he drinks hookah also so did you uh, shall we move on to the investigations and treatment yes sir investigations uh sir investigations uh, a, a hemoglobin 11.6 g per deciliter tlc uh, 9200 um, 9200 cells per mm cube and uh, platelet count is 138000 neutrophils uh, 88% and lymphocytes 5% mcv 103 and mcs 35 uh, pro, um, lft Uh, protein 5.3 albumin 2.6 globulin 2.7 uh, uh, sgot scpt 99 and 45 units per liter um, ggt 962 units per liter uh, uh, alkaline phosphate is uh, 238 bilirubin 3.4 direct is 2.5 and indirect 0.9 mg per deciliter um, ptinr 1.7 ultrasound up whole abdomen short hepatomegaly and moderate ascites uh we have sent acidic fluid um um tlc was 170 cells um and it was lymphocytic acidic uh, fluid albumin is 1.4 and sag is um 1.2 acidic uh, fluid protein uh, 2.4 af uh, alpha fito protein was done it was uh, 2.2.34 uh, nanogram per milliliter uh, all the viral markers were negative endoscopy was suggestive of portal hypertension and uh, low risk small esophageal varices hello okay oh. yeah so you, in your summary you said it is a decompensated liver disease no yes sir because there was so when do when does one yeah so next question is when does one call a liver disease as decompensated and when does one call it a compensated liver disease 
So can you please uh, reiterate so that I'm sure everybody knows it. Just recapitulating would help everybody. Like according to physical examination, uh, decompensation can be uh, considered when there is a uh, um, ascites, uh, splenomegaly, or any GI bleed. Uh, according to history and examination, and uh, then coming to uh, after the investigations, we can um, score according to the child plug uh, score. If it is more than seven, it, um, then it is a decompensated liver disease and child plug scoring less than seven is compensated liver disease. In child plug scoring, we use um, ascites, um, hepatic encephalopathy, then albumin levels, prothrombin time, and uh, bilirubin. Okay, wonderful. It, you are absolutely right. But it, to add, uh, see, there is, uh, if the moment encephalopathy comes in, along with along, what you said, bleed, ascites, and encephalopathy. Encephalopathy, uh, even if happens alone, without, uh, though although rare, without a varis, varix or a bleed, itself qualifies it for a decompensated liver disease. So encephalopathy, because it is not present in him, Probably you have missed that. Otherwise, you have almost said everything what constitutes decompensated. Wonderful. And child book scoring uh, is, was basically for surgical treatment uh, of varices, which is now no more uh, the norm, but definitely helps in prognosticating, surely. So uh, you, we found a SAG of 1.2, isn't it? So, uh, can you elaborate on SAG? SAG, sir, it is um, serum ascites um, albumin gradient. If it is less than one point, yeah. uh, if it um, if it is more than uh, one point uh, one, then it is most probably due to cirrhosis. And uh, it is less than one point one, uh, then we have to consider malignancy, TB. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it is 1.2. So what do you think? Sir, so can be due to portal hypertensis and um, cirrhosis. Yeah, can, can. Cirrhosis is a pathological diagnosis, actually. Uh, so uh, in, on the, in your battery of tests that uh, you conducted, uh, did you conduct fibro scan? No, sir. We didn't do a fibro scan, actually. Okay. Okay. Never mind. Because validation of fibro scan as a uh, as a marker for or predictor for cirrhosis is now well validated. So uh, we can use fibro scan also for uh, uh, as a surrogate investigation for uh, biopsies. Otherwise, uh, a biopsy is the golden. Uh, golden benchmark for uh, diagnosing cirrhosis. Very nice. Then uh, uh, what, what, uh, how do you calculate SAG? Sir, Dr. Divya? Um, albumin, uh, total albumin minus serum albumin minus ascites fluid albumin. Hello, hello. Or is it the other way around? Is it serum albumin or is it yeah, ascitic fluid minus a serum albumin? So what, what kind of fluid do you expect in this uh, site? Is it transudate or exudate? Transudate, sir. Very nice, very wonderful. How do you, uh, uh, I'm sure you know what is transudate, exudate, no? Light, lights criteria, etc. Please revise. Yeah, I'm sure you you will know because your exam going, no? Yes, sir. So you kindly revise that. Wonderful. Shall we move on to the treatment part? Treatment. Uh... Uh, sir, I uh, sir for uh, 
मैंने इसमें ट्रीटमेंट नहीं डाला सर आई हैव इन रिटर्न द ट्रीटमेंट पार्ट इन दिस बट आई कैन टेल यू हाउ विल बी ट्रीट द पेशेंट for ascites okay. we have uh, uh for ascites we have to so what uh, are his problems oh. what are his problems for us to treat we must know what are his problems his physical problem his medical problem his social problem so we are, what all we can help him with we will do that no so his medical problems are his decompensated liver disease which is probably alcoholic alcohol is the cause for that along with portal hypertension so first we have to ah uh, yes sir first we have to remove the factor which is causing the disease that means he have to um, we have to ask him to stop drinking uh, then then the next uh. thing is the problem that that is uh, he is facing is ascites so for the treatment of ascites we have uh, first first one is to uh, limit his um, fluid intake to at least 1.5 liter then low um, low sodium diet uh, that is 2 g per day uh, less than 2 g per day then ha huh, then uh, diuretics uh, which include uh, loop diuretics and uh, spironolactone first uh, start loop diuretics uh, with uh, 40 mg which should be doubled in within a week then uh, and uh, if uh, as he is having uh, when he came over he was having tense ascites so we have done a diagnostic and therapeutic uh, tapping uh, which relieved his breathlessness hello um, yeah then ha huh. then for alcohol dependence we have to start on some uh, medications like aca prostate or disulfuram if he is continuing drinking even after uh, advising to stop dr devya he is in the hospital no so yes, was just sir. by telling him not to just by telling him not to drink uh, you think a person who has been drinking for 33 years no you said yes sir he won't uh, without abstention you think by saying don't drink he will stop drinking no sir so uh, he will, he will have withdrawal symptoms isn't it he is likely to have withdrawal symptoms Yes, sir. He is. You you are not wrong. What I'm trying to, uh, we I'm just trying to help you put it in order. So uh, you you are not wrong. You are right in whatever you are saying. So every single bit that you've said is relevant. But we will just put it in order. Firstly, that uh, uh, he he will have. He's likely to have withdrawal symptoms. Uh, in the so hospital. So we will have to not... take care of his. so next question comes is what withdrawal symptoms is he likely to have tremors tachycardia someone uh, who has been hmm. yeah wonderful uh, then sir seizures alcohol delirium tremors okay hmm. so what is delirium tremens Uh, so see, he will he will have seizures um, associate see uh, number one let us uh, uh, we will you are right he can have delirium tremens he can have wernicke's encephalopathy he can go into cosa co psychosis subsequently but uh, the underlying cause is that see there are some things that you need the help of other colleagues also as a family physician you cannot treat everything you must not step beyond uh, what you are capable of so sometimes we need help of other colleagues like uh, psychiatric colleagues like gastroenterology colleagues so uh, th- there you heard about thiamine deficiency yes sir so since uh, since he, his appetite is reduced you will give him uh, what all iv fluids did you give him normal saline dextrose ringer lactate what what did you give 
Uh, probably uh, dextrose given, also you would have given? No, sir. We haven't given any IV fluids. We just gave op- injection okay. optineuron. In 100 ml. Optineuron. <laughs> optineuron. Uh, uh, let us not uh, talk uh, about sorry, brand, sorry. brand names on a scientific platform. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so one has to supplement thiamine okay. because thiamine is usually depleted and deficient in people who are habituated to taking chronic alcohol in a chronic, uh, chronic form. So why, why is thiamine deficient? Because of various factors, because of nutritional deficiency, because of ga- uh, inflammation of the gastric mucosa. And, and so, uh, and thiamine is required for uh, carbohydrate metabolism. Thiamine is required for uh, pyridoxine metabolism also. So we must supplement thiamine first, at least uh, 100 milligrams or t- uh, for first seven days. Yes, sir. At least 75 milligrams at least. Okay. For the first seven days. I'm sure you would have already done it. It is just that it, you have, it has escaped your uh, attention. And, and then we, you must start chlorodize epoxide to uh, control his possible craving for uh, withdrawal or for alcohol. That is also over a period of seven days. Start with 20, 30 milligram QID, go on for the next three, four days, then move on to. Uh, 10 milligram QID, then five milligram VD, and then stop on seventh day. But always with the help of a psychiatric colleague. I'm sure he would have been already uh, under consultation from multiple people in your multi-speciality hospital. It is just that you, it has escaped your attention. I'm certain of that. Never mind, it happens during periods of stress. You are already preparing for your theory exam. Dates have been announced. So oh, in sure. under duress, you are presenting this. <laughs> so when is the date of exam? Sir, March 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh, wonderful. So prepare well. You have uh, performed re- very well here. You have presented it very well. Then you have also to ensure that he doesn't fall back to the uh, uh, old habit when he is discharged. No? Yes, sir. He should not fall back to the same same habit. Then you have to counsel his family also that in case that is called uh, safety netting. So okay. when when the uh, you send it send him back for after treatment, he is not likely to get cured hundred percent. No, it will take some time for him to maybe he will be discharged before he is uh, cured, isn't it? Yes. Is it not so? So he's likely to yes, come back in follow-up. Yeah. yeah, so you will have to counsel yeah. his family. Can they come back to you or need they go to the government hospital, which is free of cost? He's a farmer. Can he afford treatment at your center? Isn't it? Yes, so uh, it will be a good idea to... Uh, uh, to actually counsel the family also. And what if he falls back? What are the danger signs in case he starts bleeding, in case he go, throws up a fit, in case he uh, is not eating, in case he runs a fever? Because one of the uh, another greatest uh, uh, challenges is sepsis. No? Yes, sepsis is a great challenge in people who are habituated to alcohol and liver disease. So you have to advise them that in case he is not, you have to detail whatever possible outcomes you can think of, what depending upon his condition, you have to advise them also. So it is not just the treatment of the individual as a GP, you have to treat the indiv- individual and the family as a unit. You have to counsel the family also, caregivers also. Yes. Then what supports, then there is, you've heard about Alcoholic Anonymous? Yes, sir, support group for... Uh, there's, a, there's a non-governmental organization called Alcoholic Anonymous uh, that can uh, take such willing people who are willing to reform into their own fold by holding, uh, giving them um, um, weekly, their region-based uh, centers, which give them... Uh, they keep their uh, motivation up by staying uh, sober. Isn't it? 
you know, I'm sure you everybody has heard of Alcoholic Anonymous. There are NGOs. The government of uh, India, Ministry of Health, also has a uh, helpline. You can find that number. It is a, a toll-free number. It is a, uh, available on the Ministry of Health of Family Welfare (MHFW) website. Uh, it is available in regional languages, so uh, seeking help from them would not be a problem. And what are the possible dangers that can happen if he if his, uh, if he goes on? G, uh, GI bleed, malignancy, hmm. uh, sub. Uh, because you have already screened him for alpha fetoproteins, you have screened him that are normal, yes, isn't it? Yes, sir. So, uh, but but you will continue to tell him that please abstain, otherwise long term risks is maintained until and unless you uh, and the entire treatment will come back to zero if you take even one sip in next six months. So he has to stay sober for a long time. You have to reiterate. Isn't it? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody uh, Anybody else who has a question can post it in the... Uh, Dr. Arpit, uh, yes. uh, do you have some questions to ask him? Ask her? Uh, Dr. Arpit Jain. Uh, Dr. Arpit, sir, you are now unmuted. You could uh, ask the questions. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Ah, Divya. Uh, Divya. Uh, uh, okay. First of all, I should compliment Dr. Uh, Heman for wonderful for wonderful insight into the uh, problem of uh, alcoholism because sometimes as an in internal medicine uh, physicians we don't uh, go into this much detail about alcohol problem so it was uh, i mean a thing to learn for all family medicine students because maybe when we, you, you you are training under us, an internal medicine physician, we may not be telling you so much detail about uh, alcohol problem, social aspects of the alcoholism, all and uh, all those things. So Dr. Hemant has dealt with all these things in quite detail. It's wonderful. I should compliment Divya also for a wonderful Thanks. presentation. Uh, uh, Divya, now I would like to ask some questions because now I'm, I will not be dealing anything with the alco uh, 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 alcohol issue because th that is wonderfully dealt by Dr. Hemant. So first of all, you uh, uh, in your family history, you told about there is no family history of any liver disease. So what was in your mind when you uh, uh, you, you asked this? Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, um, sir, hemochromatosis, yeah, Wilson's huh, disease. Uh, any glycogen storage diseases, SLE. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Mm. He, uh, hemolytic diseases. Uh, sir, it's me. I think Dr. Arpit is unable to unmute himself. Uh, yeah. Hello. Am I oh, audible? Hello? Yes, sir. You are audible now, sir. Ah, yes. yes, Divya. 
సార్ హిమోక్రోమటోసిస్ విల్సన్స్ డిసీజ్ గ్లైకోజన్ స్టోరేజ్ డిసీజెస్ ఎస్ఎల్ఈ గ్లైకోజన్ హెపటైటిస్ గ్లైకోజన్ ఎట్ వాట్ ఎస్ సార్ గ్లైకోజన్ స్టోరేజ్ డిసీజ్ ప్రెజెంట్ ఎట్ వాట్ ఎస్ యంగ్ యంగ్ చిల్డ్రన్ సార్ సారీ సో వాట్ ఎవర్ యు సే షుడ్ బి రిలెవెంట్ టు యువర్ పేషెంట్ ఓకే సార్ సారీ రైట్ ఆ you did uh, not tell anything immune. about any other disease you just tell told us about because in family history we ask about certain other things also no not only about liver disease so anyway you 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 should take care of that now coming to your uh, in case so you 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 made the diagnosis of alcoholic you liver say your diagnosis again alcoholic liver disease uh, with portal hypertension with uh decompensated alcoholic liver disease with portal hypertension without any hepatic encephalopathy okay mm. any scoring doctor did your voice is box score 11 ah hello child box score 11 sir 11 hello ha there is a problem as a time and again i am getting muted hello uh, uh, yes sir i think i think there was an entry of a participant probably there was some glitch because of that you are hmm. uh, absolutely audible now sir uh, okay so what is the child books uh, uh, class uh, divya sir 11 uh, Look, C A B C. Tell us what is A B C. A B C. C C C C. Child box okay. uh, class C. So why do you say it is decompensated liver disease? Why not it is severe alcoholic hepatitis? Why not it is acute alco- uh, uh, acute alcohol alcoholic hepatitis? Ascites is there, sir. It is a sign of uh, decompensation, and uh, okay. Um, Fair you don't find uh, ascites in severe alcoholic hepatitis don't you find ascites in severe alcoholic hepatitis yes sorry yes you you can have ascites in severe alcoholic hepatitis but in severe alcoholic alcoholic hepatitis your bilirubin will be much higher than this here bilirubin is only 3 3 right in severe alcoholic hepatitis blue ribbon should be much higher than this hello hello ha sir ha so now coming to sag what is sag serum albumin uh, ascites um, um serum ascites albumin gradient sir so yeah. how do we calculate it serum albumin minus ascitic fluid album so what is the significance of sag if it is more than 1.1 it can be due to po- it is due to portal hypertension if it is less than 1.1 then mostly malignancy uh, tuberculosis yes. so 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 because earlier you said hmm. earlier you said if it is more than 1.5 it is because of cirrhosis that is not the correct statement now you made the okay, correct hypertension. statement hmm. because portal hypertension could be cirrhotic it could be non cirrhotic in any non-cirrhotic. portal hypertension it will be more than 1.1 
हेलो यस सर यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल सर सो यू देयर इज सम प्रॉब्लम टाइम एंड अगेन ओके एनीवे व्हाट आर द अदर कॉजेस ऑफ हाई साग अदर देन पोर्टल हाइपरटेंशन और इज इट द ओनली कॉज ऑफ हाई साग नो सर बट बट चेरी सिंड्रोम okay but the charlie syndrome uh, again is okay right but th- that also causes the portal hypertension um congestive uh, cardiac failure yes can mm-hmm. uh, ex- um extra hepatic portal vein obstruction हाइसाग You are right. Hmm. Any cardiac conditions which causes right-sided failure, leading to ascites, that ascites would be high sag, like constrictive pericarditis, restrictive cardiomyopathy, severe TR. These kind of conditions will cause high sag. So, other than portal hypertension, anything causing hepatic congestion, leading to ascites, that ascites could be of high sag. So, so th- th- this is an exception other than portal hypertension. right ha huh, sir okay now uh yeah, just uh, I, i would like to uh, interrupt so for briefly uh, doctor our chief guest dr christian from uh, germany has joined he was okay. uh, held up because of professional reasons uh, elsewhere so we welcome dr christian uh, welcome to the forum dr arpit you can now please carry on Sorry Thank for the interruption. Okay, uh, Divya. Uh, yes, sir. So, after now you have done aseptic tap. Yes. Other than sag, what are the other things you would like to see in your aseptic fluid? Uh, sir. polymorph uh, number of polymorphs in the aseptic fluid if it is more than uh, 2 to 50 then we have to <clears throat> think about uh, sbp sir uh, then at the amylase levels are more more than pancreatitis so then... not only you know not only say i mean uh, your neutrophils you would like but to see the... overall cell count and cytology of the aseptic fluid overall cell counts and cytology of your fluid right yes sir yes you sir you like to see malignant cells also you would like to see what type of cells are there neutrophilic lymphocytic if, if these lymphocytic are neutrophilic then, then you would have... like to see whether they what is the count of the neutrophils count if you are right lymphocytic if then you... uh, we have to think about tb tb sir then because malignant in chronic liver count. disease associated tuberculosis is also common so you have to look at that also associated malignancy is also common hepatic cellular carcinoma in a chronic alcohol is very co- chronic alcoholic is very common so you have to look at all these things so you have to look at aseptic fluid with i mean with a open mind yes. right yes sir so what else you would like to see so or, or what 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 other samples you would like to send Uh, as a acidic fluid protein uh, cell count malignant cells ada gene expert yes mm. cultures oh. also if the patient ha, culture, can, we are sending in cultures so how would you send a culture how would you send a culture sample 10 ml how how how, how would you send it how would you send a uh, acidic fluid culture sample should be send a blood should be send in a blood culture bottle not in normal sterile bottle should be in a blood culture bottle
Arpajit, your voice got interrupted again, I suppose. Yes, sir. Now you are off mute. Yes, sir. Okay. So, I think you are telling something about the treatment of this patient. Hello. Uh, hello. Hi. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, treatment of uh, treatment of this patient. Um, One aspect of is of alcohol. Uh, the that Dr. Hemant has already dealt with. So other aspects. Uh, uh, kindly, kindly excuse me, sir. Uh, yes. We'll have uh, just for everyone to know. We have five more minutes for uh, questioning in this session. Then we have certain questions from the chat box also that need right. uh, we'll take up probably. So five okay. more okay. minutes for questioning. Okay. Uh, yes. Quick, 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 yes. Okay. Uh, sir, first fluid restriction and uh, then uh, sodium restriction. Flu fluid fluid restriction. restriction. Fluid restriction is nowadays out of favor in treatment of anxiety. Okay. Salt restriction. Okay, sir. Salt. Salt restriction. Less than two gram. Yes. Uh, then um, loop diuretics and uh, first is um, loop diuretic or something else. Among the diuretics, which diuretics is the first first choice? Pyrrolactones. Pyrrolactones is the first choice. Then you can add loop, loop diuretic. diuretic. Okay. How much uh, uh, pyrrolactone you can give maximum? Four hundred mg. Up to four hundred milligram, you can give. Right. And uh, loop else? diuretics up to 120 milligram. Mm, uh, okay. Uh, if the patient is having refractory ascites, um, that is after sodium restriction and uh, having maximum amount of loop diuretics and pyrrolactones. Maximum tolerated can... amount. Maximum Max tolerated yeah. or this, this, this limit 400 and 160. Okay, then? Then we have to think about uh, large volume parasynthesis mm -hmm. where we... Uh, more than five liter of fluid is um, uh, tapped from the uh, tap is being tapped. Large volume uh, percentage is okay. Uh, with albumin cover. Right. If, mm -hmm. uh, if it is still re refilling fast, I mean, you are doing a large volume parasitness and, and within two days you are seeing it's the same again. After that. Tip. Tip. Hmm? What is tips? Trans, uh, transcellular intrahepatic portosystemic anastomosis, uh, portosystemic shunt. Shunt. Mm -hmm. Very good. Shunt. Okay. Uh, Any other thing? So, Dr. Divya, uh, there is yes. another problem that he had two problems now. One was uh, drinking, the other was hookah smoking, no? Yes, sir. So, uh, some, uh, there's a very valid question in the chat box. For people who don't know hookah smoking, how do you quantify it? Like for uh, cigarette, we quantify it. No? It can be counted. So, it, to your knowledge, is there a quantification method for hookah smoking? You know what is a hookah, no? It is an indigenous uh, uh, way of smoking tobacco where instead of the filter, the water... A compartment filters the smoke and the person sucks it through the uh, sucking uh, uh, pipe and it comes as vapor vapors to the person who's uh, sucking the hookah. So do you know of how to quantify hookah? And what will you do to yes, stop him from smoking? He cannot smoke hookah in the hospital, no? There is oxygen flow there. He cannot smoke in the hospital. So he will have withdrawals of that also. So you will have to think about nicotine replacement therapy as well. Maybe bupropion or varin clean, clean, you know, that, uh, famous uh, commercial brand called Champix. So uh, hookah is actually a, a very nice question, very relevant question. Uh, hookah, for someone who was asked is, uh, uh, see hookah can be called, it is there's impossible to call, uh, standardize hookah preparations. Uh, impossible to standardize the tobacco content because in cigarette, commercially available cigarettes, there's a filter, there's a content of tobacco, whereas in hookah, you can 
there is no uh, standardization so who has said that in one session of hookah probably one smokes about uh, 100 is exposed to same as about 100 cigarettes because of without filtration so um it is a controversial topic because hookah smoking hookah bars have come up so w again the uh, attention of the fraternity is being drawn to the po- dangers posed by unfiltered tobacco s- smoke going into the lungs and air passages and the system so hookah smoking in, in fact is more, more dangerous than cigarette smoking so for for all those uh, who think that hookah was a safer uh, uh alternative to cigarette is rather more dangerous so uh, there is no way of actually quantifying or standardizing but yes it is assumed and believed that for all practical purposes one session is many cigarettes not one cigarette many cigarettes and he has been so- smoking it for 22 years as, as per your history no yes sir dr divya Yes, sir. So you can imagine. So you have. So you have to do something about his alcohol problem as well as his smoking problem also. Yes. Luckily, uh, he does not have diabetes and his BMI is not high. Otherwise, the two hit hypothesis would have taken its toll on his uh, liver disease also. There's a two hit hypothesis which says that if obese and diabetics will have an aggravated disease. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. uh yeah, i'll uh, just have to hand over the mic to dr seren so that he can just uh, sure. introduce our host uh, sorry our uh, chief guest in detail uh, because uh, sir had joined in late uh, dr seren if you kindly take over please uh, hello sorry for the interruption uh, let me uh, welcome uh, dr uh, christian once again he is uh, our chief guest for today's classroom he is from germany and currently he holds the post of uh, image coordinator of uh, vasco da gama movement and as we all know vasco da gama is the young doctors movement of uh, europe uh, i welcome dr uh, christian over to you uh, we expect a few words from you dr christian hello thanks for inviting me um so um Yeah, I had to do some personal business, so I joined late. But um, as far as I know, uh, I'm supposed to talk a bit about uh, general practice in Germany and the current state of um, um, yeah, our GPs and how we cope with COVID. I think this would be most important uh, to, to, to talk about. Yeah, so I'm happy to wait if you want to continue your discussion. Yeah, but I can also start give a little presentation. Please go ahead, Christian. Please go ahead. Okay, uh, I try to to share my screen because uh, during my wait, I put together a little presentation can here. Can Can you see the screen? I, I'm not entirely sure if you can see my screen now. Yes, yes your screen is visible. That one. Okay, so. Um, This is my team. Uh, I work uh, in a rural area in the southwest of Germany, and um, I'm working together with two other doctors. One of which is my dad, and then we have another young doctor, Wolfgang, and we have seven nurses on duty. And we are self-employed, as most GPs are in Germany. So we are not directly linked to any hospital. And the the system in Germany works like that: that uh, GPs are meant to to yeah be. some kind kind of uh, business managers to um, and you can see a, a freshly built practice uh, on the the pictures and um, in germany we um the state of covid is that we initially had a lot of luck and received praise from other countries because we had uh, rather few cases and few deaths but now we are in the second wave like anywhere else and um, <clears throat> maybe we were just lucky in the start and we are um, currently battling um, around uh, uh, 20000 infections per day which are uh, f- uh, we we know of yeah and maybe five times uh, that number which we don't know and uh, around 1000 deaths per day we are currently in a soft lockdown which stabilizes the incidence quite well but it doesn't go down as we intended to and locally our 
intensive care units are on the threshold to full capacity. So um, yeah, really facing a problem here. And we started to vaccinate our population currently only with the Comirnaty mRNA vaccine. We have waxed around 1.5% of our population so far, which is not really helping much. Personally, I'll receive my first vaccination on Monday next week. And I already started to inform all the patients uh, and relatives in my nursing home because I also care for a nursing home around the corner. And I enrolled everybody. So all the elderly patients that live there um, have signed that they want to get the vaccination. But unfortunately, like everywhere else in the country, we have problems with the personnel. So uh, a lot of nurses don't want to get waxed, uh, which is also a problem in the intensive care units. I heard of one intensive care unit where only one in 18 nurses uh, is willing to take the vaccine. Although we have really good data that it's protective and that it's safe, right? which is a pity. Um, and we have uh, freedom of speech in Germany, like in most countries, hopefully. And so we have a lot of protests against the lockdown measures and a lot of personal uh, and social conflicts. But so far, it's rather quiet. It's OK. I think it's good that we we have an ongoing discussion. Yeah? But uh, it will be a bigger problem when we have more vaccine, because I fear that we won't uh, get enough per, uh, people vaccinated to really reach the uh, safe spot. Um, and our social impact, the social impact of COVID, uh, for that we have a lot of relief programs going on. Germany is taking up a lot of debts and tries to, to help the small businesses. Um, yep, somebody's painting on my uh, monitor. That's fine. OK, uh, public health is separate from uh, from uh, the GPs in Germany. Um, so we don't have that much interaction for COVID. It would be good if we could talk to each other more often. So public health essentially tells us GPs who to test. And when we receive any positive results, the labs automatically report it to the public health departments. Um, we have local health, uh, public health departments in all small counties in Germany. Um, and they do the tracing. Or they try to do the tracing, which um, works mediocre. And surveillance data, surveillance data is available on the website uh, where I took the screenshot from. And we have very detailed information. But yeah, I think we miss a lot of the ongoing infections. And yeah, the tracking of the sick people is mostly done by the GPs. So we try to care for the people when they stay at home in quarantine. We have programs, uh, corporations with insurance companies that pay us that we call them on a regular basis. And yeah, then we, uh, most uh, of the people get treated by us GPs. And we have limited treating options like everyone else on the planet for um, outpatient care. Just one more slide, I think. Um, yeah, COVID suspects in Germany. Um, uh, in primary, primary health care, we have several um, problems. The protection measures, of course, the architectural circumstances are not that good in our small practices. Uh, the one you've seen, my practice is really high standard because it's newly built. Most GPs work in rather small flats that have been converted to GP practices and they don't have a lot of space. They don't have a lot of fresh airflow. And so the infection risk is quite high. Um, then uh, everybody tries to solve this problem differently. For example, some, some uh, GPs aren't able to see infected people because of their uh, small rooms and they just they don't know how to protect themselves others have built tents in front of their practices so they refer uh, you can like we did we we signed up that we are a covid uh, um, hub for for um, ambulatory care so others can send their patients to us for um, testing and treatment yeah and the testing is done in the practice or you can refer to special testing centers uh, we also do testing of asymptomatic patients of covid contacts also of returning travelers who can get out of quarantine faster when they test again 
and we are testing people before they go to hospital when it's planned or before they go to a nursing home or to rehab and school staff is also able to to get tested when when they want to have um, like uh, special paperwork for free testing yeah. Okay. Um, oh, one more slide. The strength in local primary health care uh, related to COVID is that most patients have a strong, long personal relationship with their GP because in Germany you can choose your GP as you like and most people, they stay with their GP as long as the practice is open. So uh, for sometimes 30 to 40 years, they have seen the same GP and they have a good relationship. Uh, which is important for uh, the trust regarding um, new diseases like COVID and also the vaccination. Um, we are uh, getting more professional in Germany. So this we can look up to India definitely because we just started uh, getting uh, chairs for um, general practice on all universities. We now have them, but uh, um, we slowly get more scientific in Germany around primary health care. And uh, we have good networking, um, um, self-employed people, uh, as most GPs are, they tend to be more initi uh, initiative. They, they have to keep the ship afloat. They have to get their practice going. Uh, otherwise, they don't get any money out of it. So uh, yeah, we've seen a lot of different solutions. Um, um, the federal system of Germany, where uh, we have 16 counties in, uh, or states, and each state has uh, uh, slightly different strategies. And this diversity helps us to, f to, to, yeah, to compare and then find the best way how to get along. OK, that's what I wanted to talk. I think this uh, could be of interest. I can also talk more about primary health care in Germany if you want. But uh, as far as I know, um, I should just give a brief commentary. So I'm free for your questions if you want to ask me anything. I just wrote down some points that I think that are, are good because not everything's bad at the moment. We can adapt uh, to these kind of situations and we have a lot of trust from the, our patients as GPs. And uh, in Germany, we also, we, we, we can uh, cope with people that are really uh, sometimes awkward, contrary, pos contrary positions. And um, as you might have seen again, we just we are in one world and we have similar problems in uh, countries that might look totally different in the first place. Yeah. Oops. Okay, I have to free my desktop again. So uh, that I can see the chat if there is any yeah, question uh, to uh, regarding Germany. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that Dr. Christian, uh, we'll, we'll just ask uh, the audience to pose their questions in the chat box uh, mm -hmm. for Dr. Christian. Uh, it was it was a very uh, well compiled and nice uh, talk. And it was great to know about uh, how GPs are uh, dealing with the current situation because uh, the as you told, the first impressions were very different in your country. And the, uh, the second hit is probably uh, hitting harder. So uh, if there are any questions for Dr. Krishnan, please uh, pose them on the chat box. Meanwhile, I'll, uh, I'd like to invite Dr. Uh, Devashish Saini, who's the uh, president of the Haryana chapter of AFPI. Um, uh, if he could just join us and uh, um, we, I would like to just Ask him how how he uh, deals with the alcohol problem, the family uh, aspect, and the uh, patients' uh, social problems. Uh, as a family practitioner, uh, when these patients come to the uh, OPD. Meanwhile, uh, everyone can pose their questions in the chat box. Uh, Dr. Devashish Saini, please. We have one uh, question in the chat box. Uh, the question is to Dr. Christian. The question is, uh, can primary care physician use point of care ultrasound in Germany? Are you licensed to do it? 
Um, I'm licensed to do ultrasound of the belly and of the thyroid gland, uh, so I can get money uh, if I if I do it and I file my reports. Uh, I also uh, trained in some other ultrasound specialties like echocardiography, and I sometimes do carotid ultrasound. Uh, I don't have a mobile ultrasound. We have a good one in our practice. But of course, we are self-employed, so uh, we already talked about this because one of our three doctors is also an emergency physician who is driving around and um, yeah, really working on the, 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 the acute emergencies. Um, um, maybe we'll get one in the future, but it's, uh, it's on us. Yeah, we have to pay for our ultrasound and sometimes we get reimbursement. In the end, you have to like it uh, uh, and um, you can also refer, of course, if it has time. Point of care, is, it's not lucrative, so, um, but if I'd like to do it, I could do it. <laughs> this uh, maybe a strength and weakness of our system. Uh, um, it, we don't get reimbursed for everything we do, but uh, we can do as we like. If we want to do more technical um, examinations, we are free to do so. You should only uh, have done some courses and you should be able to... Um, uh, yeah, to show that you have the appropriate skills. Thank you, Dr. Christian. We, uh, those who want to ask questions can post their uh, questions in the chat box. Hmm. Meanwhile, Dr. Uh, Devish Saini, sir, uh, you can continue with the session. All right. Thank you, Dr. Sarin, and thank you, Dr. Bidyut, for uh, inviting me over. And uh, it was a wonderful session. I'm very happy to be part of it. Uh, a lot of things uh, learned. Um, uh, as a practicing family physician, uh, I have a couple of comments to make. Uh, one is that uh, uh, alcohol dependence, I would think, is a very part and parcel of the condition of this patient. And uh, uh, as such, uh, uh, from the family medicine perspective, we have to uh, consider it and uh, uh, elaborate on it and uh, go deep into it uh, to, if we really help, even if, even if we really want to just help the liver of the patient, uh, we do have to get into his alcohol dependence and you know uh, figure out what to do about it and what's going on about it. Um, the second comment is uh, uh, that uh, uh, in in family medicine uh, we like to make a, what we call a three stage assessment. Um, so uh, one part of it is the clinical uh, assessment, which uh, was wonderfully discussed uh, in this today's session and in detail. Uh, I don't have much of any comments on that. Um, but uh, uh, the other two aspects uh, uh, we also have to consider from a family medicine perspective, which is uh, the individual assessment and the environment assessment. And, and this is a very wonderful uh, patient in which uh, all, both of these things are uh, uh, very, very important to consider. Uh, as I said, even if we want to really help the liver of the patient only, uh, considering him a liver cirrhosis or a liver um, a hepatitis patient, even then we have to, uh, it would really help if we consider the individual and environment aspect of this uh, patient. To consider the individual aspect uh, uh, and make an individual assessment, uh, one uh, very interesting uh, and easy, uh, not, not easy, but an interesting tool is uh, ICE which is the ideas, concerns and expectations of the patient. So what does a patient think and feel and express about his own condition. Uh, so once we start looking at, uh, one of the things that we like to do in family medicine is to look at the patient as a whole. And uh, we like to uh, ask uh, these questions to uh, help the patient assert their individuality. So what does the patient think about what is going on? And, and, uh, uh, and, and are, does he have any specific concerns that he wants addressed in this illness episode? And uh, what is his expectations uh, from us as care providers um, uh, uh, as to how we should be helping him? Uh, these uh, questions, when we start asking them initially, they sound very artificial and uh, very uh, difficult uh, to frame uh, and uh, 
but as as we go and as we uh, start hearing the answers from the patients they completely change our outlook towards uh, uh, dealing with uh, and and managing the patient uh, so for example in this uh, patient with alcohol dependence and uh, uh, severe uh, uh, hepatitis and um, uh, end stage uh, liver disease uh, his uh, expectations uh, may not be in line with our expectations so our expectations as doctors would be to have him stop his alcohol com- completely whereas his expectation would be uh, most likely uh, and and we can ask him and that would be the best thing to know but uh, maybe his expectation is to uh, you know please get uh, this problem solved as soon as possible so that i can go back to my drinking so uh, unless we ask them ask these questions uh, tough questions and uh, hear and, and and hear the answers in a non judgmental and accepting environment uh, then we will be able to gradually you can use this opportunity of hospitalization to uh, work on his motivation uh, to quit alcohol um and you know but for that we have to know uh, what is the starting point and what are his concerns and expectations about uh, what is going on with him and his liver um the last is the environmental aspect and and nowhere else is this more important than uh, patients with uh, dependence so uh, environment means uh, where is he living where uh, what is his family what is uh, uh who else is he drinking with uh, and uh, is he going back into the same circle uh social circle and and ultimately if he goes back into the same social circle we have to work out with him um, how uh, easy or difficult would it be to maintain his abstinence even if he does want to uh, start uh, uh, to try to abstain um so uh, 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 environment can be an enabling environment also uh, so we can explore the good things in his environment that might help him uh, in in quitting alcohol and taking care of his liver um, and uh, you know the fresh air of the rural uh, india is uh, uh, quite rejuvenating and uh, better than uh, maybe the polluted air that we breathe in the cities uh, but uh, at the same time and and of course he, he would have access to fresh produce fresh vegetables and uh, uh, maybe fresh fruits also in the nearby areas uh, and all of that may help uh, but at the same time uh, environment can be toxic also and uh, uh, we have to explore that and uh, discuss that with the patient uh, assess that and make our recommendation on how uh, we are going to help the patient manage his environment as well um so uh, that's those are my uh, a quick comments on uh, how as a family physician uh, we would also look at this patient in addition to the clinical aspects which were wonderfully laid out so far um in in addition i would like to thank uh, uh, everyone for taking out time and uh, uh, you know doing so much of effort uh, into uh, presenting this session and being a part of this session thank you thank you so much dr devish sir um uh, so we'll just head towards the chat box questions once i think most of them were already dealt with by uh, dr hemant during the presentation itself um so uh, dr devashish has already answered the points uh, which you put up uh, more about the alcohol dependence and the social factors and uh, also the uh, eyes uh, the ideas concerns and expectations approach that dr christian also men- mentioned that is being uh, used in germany as well and uh, one one question that uh, um, was put up was there uh, any complications of the uh, sudden enforced abstinence during hospitalization uh, so uh, dr divya dr divya uh, dr vidyut i think that was also partially covered when we discussed the withdrawal symptoms uh, 
uh, and uh, the complications that can happen uh, both from the psychological point of view and the uh, uh, right right uh, correct uh, right so apart from this uh, dr uh, rashmi had asked what uh, dr himant uh, uh, sir already elaborated upon um, uh -huh. uh, that we are not aware of uh, quantification of the hookah smoking so i just wanted to add a point that um, uh, over here in haryana because it is uh, especially gurgaon uh, where this hospital is located it's a mix of uh, rural and urban population and uh, na, these people generally sit around it's like a evening uh, sit down area uh, where uh, they make a big hookah in the center and it is like rotated around for smokes so hours of uh, conversation basically go around this hookah so because cigarette obviously as sir mentioned has standardized size and uh, the filter size and everything and uh, we cannot quantify because for what duration they are continuing to smoke depends on how long their session runs so um, i think we have covered with uh, all the questions that are uh, yeah uh, so we are covered with all the questions on the chat box if other participants have any other questions that they have not been able to ask right now maybe they can uh, post on our um, youtube channel uh, on uh, spice route we'll have uh, this session and uh, like all the questions we'll uh, get back and try to answer those questions um, i like to thank dr uh, arpit jain sir and dr hemant saluja sir for the brilliant uh, moderation of the session that we've had it was a brilliant academic session Welcome. and we are hoping that uh, although this is the first classroom uh, session for the uh, state of haryana we are really eager to uh, you know continue with the trend and hopefully we'll have many more like this and uh, uh, i'll uh, just hand over the uh, mic to uh, dr serin and uh, so that he can take any questions for dr christian uh I think we don't have uh, any more uh, questions to Dr. Christian. Uh, we shall uh, conclude the session. Shall we uh, conclude the session? Hello. Okay. Uh, Dr. Christian has any last uh, comments? Like to take any last comments from him, and then we can probably wrap up. We have five minutes for his last comments. Thank <laughs> you.